Hi guys, welcome back to A Nurse in the Kitchen. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Chef Nurse Maggie, and I'm so happy that you came back to partake with us and share. Last week, we went over the basic essentials for, the, for your kitchen in terms of gadgets and, and uh, items that you need in your kitchen. Uh, a couple of things I forgot to mention to you. You need to have a sharpener. This is what we use when we're trying to sharpen our knife because, I mean, you know, they have other models. You can go online and find other uh, knife sharpeners, but this works for me, okay? And because in the kitchen, you can cut yourself a lot more with a dull knife. So you wanna make sure your knives are sharp, not extremely sharp because then you have the other issue. But this works for me. If I'm gonna cut some meat and I'm gonna cut some other thing, I just do a couple of this and it and it works. And that goes into your, uh, your kitchen drawer. The other thing that I wanted to mention to you is also a peeler. Oh my God, I'm in love with this little thing. I've had it since uh, culinary school and it still works. And you know, I always ask myself, why didn't I, didn't I think of this first? <laughs> Whoever made this thing is probably a millionaire right now. But anyway, so how has your week been? Today's Friday. I'm a little bit late doing this video, but it's been a very eventful week. In fact, I just had some really sad news, but I knew that I had to do this video. So I wanted to, um, I didn't want to miss because we're just getting started and we don't want to miss. We want to maybe be regular. Just a side note that, uh, you know, this life is going to throw us curveballs. You know that, right? And I told my friend, nobody escapes. No one is immune to pain and disappointment. But how do we react to it? You know, Chuck Swindoll says, Life is 90% what happens to you and 10% how you react to it. So when life throws us curveballs, we can choose to <clears throat> curl into a ball. We can wish we were dead and sometimes we do, but how do we sink into the pain, into what is really going on with us? And that's the part of grieving that is so important to healing. You know, my fellow nurses, you know, the stages of grief, you know, the denial and all that we go through. But some people don't want to go through the grieving. They just want to go to the healing. And you cannot have healing without grieving. You have to go through it. And I mentioned uh, in the last video, when you go through the valley, we are all going through the valley. Some people more often than others. But I'm not at liberty to share my sad news with you, but my heart is heavy right now. But you know, I can still smile because you know, there's a difference between contentment, which is a state of being. It is like homeostasis for my nurse friends. But when things happen, you have a blip and you want to return to homeostasis as soon as you can. So we're gonna go struggle through it. It's gonna go, it's gonna be weeks, maybe months, but you know, we are resilient, we're strong. And whatever curveball life throws at me, at you, how we respond, how we react to it. Do we just do, whoa me, it's just me, nobody else has gone through this? That's a lie. Some people have gone through a lot more than you have, and they're still standing, so we can stand too. Another thing, you know, I was doing some work on the computer and I was watching this, you know, I'm kind of multitasking even when I'm studying or reading something. If I'm working on the computer, I have the TV on or I have the iPad going. So it's like multiple streams of noise that kind of, that's the way my brain works, I guess. Um, they were talking about this young woman who's 29 years old who just has uh, been diagnosed with uh, terminal brain cancer. And she is choosing to die with dignity. And because, you know, there is no, um, there is no chance that she's going to make it. This is a terminal disease. And also she knows that the end is gonna be painful. And I know I'm going to touch on something really controversial and I am a Christian. Uh, but she decided to go to Oregon and plan her death. And I mean, you can have all sort of opinion about it, but think about that curveball 
for her husband. She's recently married, was looking forward to have a family and her mom, her parents. Oh, I just can't imagine that level of pain. But you know what? They're probably gonna make it. They're gonna make it. So, also a friend of mine who was a pastor said to me one time, he said, life is littered with pain, with glimpses of happiness. So for those of you who was thinking, I deserve to be happy. I need to be happy all the time. That's utopia. That's not gonna happen. Human being on this earth, we're going to have pain, struggle, trial. We, as people of color, know that what we've gone through and are still going through. But you know, like Maya Angelou said, still I rise, right? Still I rise. Okay, we're back. So I have the blender here, okay? And this is it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put all our ingredients in here. I'm putting the cilantro in here. And the thyme. And the garlic, I didn't even peel it. You know when I'm cooking, I like, I don't know. I just, it's me. I just like to see the shell in there. Um, but certainly, hopefully it's gonna blend all together and you're not going to be able to identify the shell. Now, you can ask, well, we need some liquid, right? Because, and we don't want to use water. So I'm going to use some olive oil, okay? And if you have vegetable oil, that's fine too. If you say, how much olive oil? I don't know. Just as much to make sure the consistency is right. It's one bad habit we have as people from the Caribbean. We don't like to measure anything, so don't ask us how much. <laughs> So it looks like I'm gonna have to keep mashing it and I may need to put more oil in there. Or I may have to use my, my powerful blender over there, the commercial one. But you don't have a commercial one, so I don't want to use a commercial one. You keep mashing it and moving it so that the part that is already mashed can move over. It's getting there. Keep mashing it. And also, I know Easter is coming and uh, I wanted to share some Easter recipes with you. So what I might have to do, I will do the next video a little earlier next week. That way I'll be able to share some uh, of my Easter recipes with you. I make a Easter breakfast pizza that my kids used to love. Get in there. But you know, it may take you a minute or two to get this done, but you'll be so happy you did because it takes quite a few minutes away from your prep time when you're trying to, to develop flavor and to cut. Yeah, this blender is not as as uh, powerful as the other one, so it's gonna take me a minute or two. But we have time because I'm definitely not going to keep you too long. Mm, this stuff is so good. Uh oh, come on, you can do it. A little bit more oil because you can't ever have too much oil because you're not gonna put the whole thing in one dish, so it's okay. It 
had a lot of garlic in there. So <laughs> maybe I went overboard a bit, but we're getting there. We're getting there. This is beautiful and green. You know, this spice mix reminds me of sofrito, but sofrito has those chilies in there, which is truly Mexican, uh, or I should say Central American. <laughs> So what is your, um, with Easter coming up, what is your Easter tradition? I remember when the kids were growing up, it's, uh, Easter we would just have the pizza and I would just do some fresh fruit and that would be most of our meal for the day. And after that, you know, for like dinner and other time, we would just use, you know, eat whatever. But it's good to have tradition because you know, your family, So those of you who may have a Vitamix or, or some smoothie, something that is real powerful, you may be tempted to use that, but you know, I just don't know that I want to mix the spice inside something that I use for smoothies, just because, you know, what if it got a lingering garlic taste? All right, we are done. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And I don't want it to be so broken down that it's become a mush, you know, because when you do your spices, it's not like that. So I want to, I think this one comes up. Yeah. I wanted to show you how beautifully green this is. This is lovely. So what I do then, once I have that, I get a mason jar and I put it in there and I save it in my fridge and this is gonna last you this thing you know i don't cook a lot okay this is the texture okay i don't cook a lot so this might last me maybe a month or two maybe three but depending on how much cooking you 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 do then it depends, you know, what you're cooking. So if you're somebody who's gonna cook rice every day and you're doing stew and other things, then you can put it in all of that, okay? The only thing you probably don't wanna put this in are your like eggs or white rice or something that you need a mild flavor. You know, you don't want, because this is really strong. Lots of garlic, lots of um, uh, cilantro, and oh, it is so beautiful and it smells so good. Now, when you put your oil in your pan and you dump a couple of tablespoons of this in there, oh my God, your dish is gonna go from zero to 10, okay? So what I do, I just take that, oh, it's so pretty. This is the jar. And I just go ahead and put that in a mason jar. And then you just put that in your fridge and you just scoop it out as you need it. Now, how beautiful is that? Simple. So instead of dicing the uh, green pepper and doing the, 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 um, the garlic and all that, you save like maybe three, five minutes. I know it may not be much, but I still think it's a nice mixture. It just reminds you of putting the stuff in your food. And also, what if you run out? You know, sometimes you say, oh my God, I ran out of garlic. Oh, I don't have any cilantro. Well, you do, it's right here. This is the beautiful apis from my home country, Haiti. And I don't know anybody who doesn't like this. And like I said, this is the traditional. You wanna put hot pepper in it. You wanna put green pepper. I even toyed with the idea of adding some onion because I love onion so much and I put it in everything. What if you don't like onion, okay? So if you wanna add onions, adelante. And uh, this video is coming to an end. Um, like I said, next week, 
I'm going to do the video early, probably on Wednesday. And we're gonna maybe do the breakfast pizza, we'll do some frittatas, and um, maybe a couple of other things, something really quick, so that you can have some options for Easter. He's risen. The last thing I wanted to mention to you guys is as we progress with the video and we brand ourselves, a our nurse and a chef, please don't laugh at my outfit. It's, uh, I'm just trying to make a point. <laughs> and I want to thank all my friends who are helping spread the word, who want to or trying to share the video because you know, I read all kinds of stuff. How to get to a thousand subscribers? Well, I don't know. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, knowing me, things have always taken me a little time, so it may not happen for a while. But I think what I'm committing to is a consistency, is to just make sure there's a video uploaded once a week. That way you don't forget me. And the word that we're going to brand this channel with is moderation. And I'll be spreading it and putting it across the screen you know, as I do editing. But I strongly believe that we should not be following all the fads. Now it's a keto, you know, night, you know, going out there, everybody's on keto diet. And I'm like, doesn't it sound like Atkins? It's the same thing. The world is a revolving door or whatever. What was then comes around. What goes around comes around. So don't be swayed. Don't spend your money. Don't say, oh, I'm on a diet, okay? Diets don't work. You need to change your lifestyle and your mindset. If you want to stay healthy, you need to think healthy. Now, one thing I suggest you do if you want to, you know, have energy and eat all the right things, clean up your cupboard. If you have all kinds of things in there that you know are tempting, like for me, I just don't have bread around because if I have it, I'm going to eat it. Even though you see this face, it's still swollen. If I eat anything, if I eat pasta, if I eat bread, it's right up here and in the belly. And that's gotten worse since I turned 50 plus and beyond. <laughs> Some of you know how old I am, but I'm not going to say it on the video. So if you have chips, if I have chips here, even though I'm not a chips eater, but when I'm stressed or I'm busy, I will reach for it. So I don't have it around. So that's what you need to do. And as a parent, as an individual, if you have issues with diabetes and hypertension and uh, obesity, you owe it to yourself to surround yourself with food that you're going to eat and if you that, that are healthy for your body. And if you want your kids to eat right, you want your mate to eat right, but yet you're not eating right, come on, you're a fraud. You have to be an example to your family, the people you want to influence. You have to be an influencer. Oh, that's a big word in YouTube. I'm not an influencer that way. But we're all struggling to maintain our ideal body weight. I don't know who decided what ideal is. But at some point, you have to accept certain imperfections, so to speak, and not get yourself all frazzled. Oh, I'm not a size six anymore. Who is? Very few people are. I saw this lady who in her 80s is lifting weight. She won bodybuilding contest, but you know what? She wakes up at two o'clock in the morning every day and she eats, drinks egg whites every morning for breakfast. I can do that. I don't want to do that. So moderation, eat anything you want in moderation. So I'm going to stop this video. And again, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and for watching. Go make yourself some a piece. Now, after the Easter video, we're going to show you how to make stock. Because remember, I told you, don't want you to use Maggie in your food anymore. I'm suggesting, I can tell you what to do. You're a grown person, you can do whatever you want. But I'm saying all these uh, things are artificial, artificial sweeteners. So if you're into sweet and low and all that, might as well just use regular sugar. I use brown sugar and then I use agave for sweetening my tea. I'm a tea drinker. But um, you don't want to be uh, eating stuff that are not good for your body. So if you learn how to make stock, stock will replace, will give you the flavor profile that you're looking for when you're cooking. 
Remember what I told you, cooks in culinary school and in some of those fancy restaurants, if they're really ascribing to the principle, the classic principle of cooking, we don't put additives in our food. We just use national flavor. We use a lot of herbs. We do stock. We do use butter because this is not a vegan channel, of course. So you can learn to do that. So I'm going to show you how to make chicken stock, vegetable stock. You can even make fish stock, but eh, I think that's going a little overboard. We did have to make fume, but we don't have to do that. I tell you, when I was in school, it was so neat to uh, learn all these French words because I'm part French. So I'm, I found it really funny when you listening to some of the Americans trying to pronounce those words. But yeah, same thing happens when I try to speak Spanish. Thank you so much for watching, guys. God bless you. I hope you have a great week. Remember that whatever the enemy throws at you, you're strong. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Au revoir. A la prochaine.